Whenever we mention the aerospace industry, we'll often immediately remember the US, NASA, or SpaceX. They're the leading organizations in the world's aerospace industry today. But on the other side of the world, in China, a new aerospace superpower is also developing dramatically, threatening the leading position of US aerospace. They even do better than the US in many aspects, like the space station or successfully launching the first methane fuel rocket. Besides, China is also applying a formidable strategy, copying ideas from successful companies in the world to beat those same ones, of which SpaceX, founded by billionaire Elon Musk, is one of the most copied companies. Most recently, Chinese companies have made important strides with their copy idea. This is like a warning to SpaceX in particular and the U.S. private space companies in general. How did China copy those ideas? Why is this a warning to SpaceX as well as the entire U.S. aerospace industry? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. We all know that almost all the U.S.'s private aerospace companies have decades of history. Compared to these companies, Chinese companies are quite new. During the last century and first decade of this century, all Chinese aerospace activities were still undertaken by government organizations. It wasn't until 2014 that China opened its aerospace sector to commercial and private activity. This was an important change for the strong acceleration of this country's aerospace industry over the past many years. Beijing Interstellar Glory Space Technology Limited, or iSpace, is one such company. This company was founded in 2016, meaning they've only been in this industry for just over seven years. But with that seven years, they're making progress on par with companies that have been in business for a long time. Most recently, on November 2nd, they successfully launched a hot test with a Hyperbola 2 test vehicle at Jiquan Satellite Launch Center. Hyperbola 2 is a small rocket with a height of 17 meters and a width of 3.35 meters using a JD-1 or Focus-1 engine with a thrust of 15 tons. The flight lasted 51 seconds, reaching an altitude of 178.42 meters. It then successfully landed vertically 1.68 meters away at a terminal speed of 0.025 meters per second. The above success is an important step in the company's roadmap to develop reusable launch vehicles. They're planning to create a medium-class rocket that will probably launch in 2025. But what we need to pay attention to is its features. What did you see when you looked at the iSpace prototype? Yeah, it has many familiar features that we're seeing in SpaceX's most powerful rockets. The first similarity is vertical landing and reuse. When we mention this ability, we'll immediately remember SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy with their unbelievable vertical landing and reuse records. This is the goal that every company is aiming for. iSpace quickly learned and applied it to its vehicle. To serve that landing, this vehicle is also designed with four landing legs that are similar to the current design of the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters. Regarding fuel, Hyperbola 2 uses methane and liquid oxygen fuel instead of solid fuel like previous prototypes. We all know this fuel mixture is being used by Starship, the world's largest rocket being developed by SpaceX. Methane and oxygen are the mixture that would be suitable for distant missions like the Mars mission of SpaceX. That means the goals of Hyperbola rockets and iSpace will also be extremely ambitious. After Hyperbola 2, iSpace is planning to create a larger and more powerful vehicle, Hyperbola 3, which is expected to reach orbit in 2025. This rocket will have a mass of 13.4 tons and a length of 69 meters and can carry 8.5 tons in the LEO if reused iSpace is aiming to launch Hyperbola 3 up to 25 times a year by 2030. That is also another copy product of iSpace. In terms of height, it's about the same height as the current Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy prototypes, with a height of about 70 meters. In addition, another version of Hyperbola 3, Hyperbola 3B, will also have a payload compartment design that's similar to payload compartments of the Falcon Heavy, which can carry up to 15 tons of payload to low Earth orbit. iSpace is taking its biggest essences from SpaceX, vertical landing, and reuse of Falcon rockets and Starship fuel. They're shifting those ideas, then combining them and pressing the copy button. Their goal is to create clones to defeat the original versions. This is not the first time Chinese companies have copied SpaceX technology. 
We can take the example of a Chinese startup company, Space Epoch. Early this year, they introduced a vehicle with exterior designs made of stainless steel material that looked similar to SpaceX's Starship and also used a mixture of liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Or we can also mention CAS Space. The company's introduced a suborbital launch vehicle similar to Blue Origin's new Shepard in which the capsule called ZK has an exterior design similar to SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Those are two other typical examples showing the radical coping strategy of Chinese commercial rocket companies. Thanks to that, to date, many major Chinese commercial aerospace companies have launched their vehicles into orbit, like CAS Space, Galactic Energy, Space, Space Pioneer, and Landspace. The most notable company recently is Landspace. They successfully launched the Zuke-2 in July, becoming the first company to be able to launch a Methalox-fueled rocket into orbit. This rocket has also many features similar to SpaceX's Starship. The important thing is that this company was only founded in 2015, but with copied ideas, they've already reached the target that SpaceX has not achieved. The U.S. companies like SpaceX have spent decades to develop and have the current achievements. But just with that copying strategy, Chinese companies only take a few years. They just need to copy and fly. Chinese government will handle the rest for them. The above strategy is seriously threatening SpaceX in particular and the U.S. aerospace companies in general. SpaceX, led by billionaire Elon Musk, is still the world's leading aerospace empire. The miracles he created with SpaceX are still shaking the aerospace industry. For example, on November 4th, SpaceX launched the 75th Falcon 9 flight this year. During this flight, Booster 1058 also set a reuse record of 18 times. It takes a long time for other companies to achieve these miracles. SpaceX is becoming a benchmark, a perfect standard for other companies to aim for. However, SpaceX is facing many disadvantages. Because they're pioneers, their breakthrough ideas are often copied by competitors, typically Chinese companies. In addition, while they're trying to help the U.S. maintain its leading position, they often encounter barriers from government agencies. We can recognize this problem in the Starship project. While China's rockets are continuously testing and flying, SpaceX is still having to remove barriers from the government to be able to conduct Starship tests and launches. Delays in the working process of government agencies are hindering the development of companies like SpaceX as well as the entire country. That is unacceptable. It's absurd that SpaceX can build a giant rocket faster than they can shuffle paperwork. This tweet from Elon Musk clearly shows what they're suffering. Right now, SpaceX is having to fight pressure from outside competitors and problems inside its country. We can affirm that SpaceX has enough power to beat all opponents and maintain their and the U.S.'s leading position. What they really need is simple, government support like what China has. It can be said that the space race is extremely fierce. China, with its copy strategy, is strongly accelerating. Rather than anything else, their goal is the position that the U.S. is currently holding. But SpaceX is still there. They'll still be the strongest warriors representing the U.S. to compete with large and aggressive rivals from the East. Hopefully, SpaceX as well as other companies and agencies will soon take new steps to respond to the rapid progress of Chinese aerospace companies. And you, what do you think about China's strategy and strides? Can these help them defeat the U.S.? Please leave your opinion in the comments section below. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.